Hey everybody, Dr. Rick here. Uh, coming at you from DH, the Bayou City. Uh, look, we are about to engage on some more melanated, uh, intense uh, discussion. We are about to undress this new video that just dropped, unless I'm late, and it's definitely possible because I'm not chasing uh, gossip, but just dropped with Diddy assaulting Cassie. Now, uh, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna really get into some of the things. I'm going to really uh, take my time with this, so I'm probably not going to uh, round this thing off in one session, especially not one of the riding with Rick special, uh, sessions, but I am going to definitely uh, touch on the things I think that are most pertinent uh, about this. So, uh, for anybody that's been hiding under a rock, uh, Cassie sometime last year filed a lawsuit. Now, the lawsuit may have been filed before that, but it became public uh, knowledge or it became uh, a big uh, topic of discussion uh, sometime last year. And ultimately, Diddy settled the lawsuit for roughly three times the amount she was actually suing him for, which speaks volumes. It, uh, and I, w I do want to say this, that it is not uncommon for people who are not actually guilty to settle civil lawsuits because of the damage that can be done, not because of what comes out of but what they're accused of, but other things that may come as a surface of the depositions and the investigations that they don't want to surface. And the longer something goes on, the more damage can be done to a, brain, a brand and a reputation. Uh, in this instance, that's not the case. Rarely do I speak that boldly. Normally, it's 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 preceded the way it should be with allegedly, and so allegedly, um, he's been accused of a lot of different things. Some things we're gonna unpack over the next several days. But right now, we're gonna talk about this thing with Cassie, and we're going to include Kim Porter, uh, the mother of his older children, in this as well. But we're gonna talk about first and foremost this video. Uh, but for you if that don't know, she sued him for abuse and a bunch of different things he supposedly did to her uh, that he did. Uh, just knowing the history of this guy and the way the streets uh, represent him, uh, foul, just straight foul. And there's a bunch of people talking about, you know, why did the hotel take as long to release that? And I'm not sure that that's the case of why it took so long for this video to surface. Um, but if the hotel did hold it, that's some pretty crazy things. And, and you never know under what um, force or cause of action they held it. I'm assuming that he paid whoever had uh, the ability to release it to keep it quiet and not until legal action uh, and the probability of getting caught up in some type of legal recourse came up did the tape finally surface. But it's showing her trying to leave. He's obviously completely undressed, so she thinks that's the time for her to get away while he's new. She gets down the highway and gets in front of the elevator. He runs out of the room, uh, nothing more than a towel wrapped around him, holding the towel, chases her down knocks the stuff out of her hand, throws her to the floor, kicks her, stumps her, uh, picks up the stuff and then grabs her by uh, her hoodie and drags her back to the room. He's later caught in the same situation, just a different video uh, vantage point, throwing some hotel, some of the vases from the hallway setups, you know, the little things they set up to decorate the hallway and little sitting areas in the hallway. He was throwing those vases at her. I can't tell whether those connected or not, uh, but he did throw them at her. Uh, and the things that he has supposedly done go way and above what you actually see in this video. What you see in the video is enough to say, okay, dude's done. Uh, if nothing else, the Me Too movement's gonna get him. Uh, but also, there's a lot that's going on here that he's going to have to answer for because it goes deep. I talked about the the guy shot in the bathroom. I talked about 
blowing up, uh, one, I think it's Kid Cudi's car behind Cassie uh, and their bodies. Now it, it, it's come out that that nine plus years that Shine did, Diddy's the actual, the person who actually pulled the trigger. So all of this stuff is coming out simultaneously. And there, uh, one of the things that I want to get on right now is we have to do a better job of building better relationships with money. Hey, Doc, what the hell that got to do what we're talking about here? Because our poor relationship with money makes us give passes to people with it. And you see it all the time. Fame and money will buy a bunch of people a lot of stuff they shouldn't have in the hood. And I'm not talking about material possessions. I'm talking about access. I'm talking about uh, things that they should be held accountable for, getting passes for. I'm talking about literally being able to ravage our community and our culture for their benefit while giving very little in, in, in turn and causing a whole lot of damage. Um, it's no doubt in my mind that this dude is in some way, um, you know, in some way connected to the death of Kim Porter. Kim Porter is supposedly the person who had a lot of the video footage and a lot of the files and a lot of the stuff on the Kirk computer that Cassie ended up with. So it is suspected that uh, whenever Kim died uh, from quote unquote some type of respiratory uh, infection, perfectly healthy 50 year old, but okay. Uh, she, when she died, um, there was a computer missing. And a lot of people were concerned about this computer. The reason they were concerned is the files and the data that was on it. Well, it turns out a lot of that data that was suspected to be on there, Cassie ended up with some, assuming Cassie had the computer. Uh, it has been long as, uh, suspected that Cassie and Kim both were working together to try to uh, expose what Diddy was doing. Uh, we haven't even gotten to the gay orgies and all that stuff. That's going to be another day. And that's going to continue to unfold. And a lot of people are going to catch strays. And a lot of people are going to get exposed. And a lot of people are going to be upset. And a lot of you are going to start making excuses. And all of a sudden, it will no longer be any of our business because we have a poor, uh, we have a poor um, relationship with money. We approach money from a mindset of lack and scarcity. And because we do, we don't see how we can have it because we think there's not a lot of it. There's no abundance of money. There's no abundance of, abundance of resource. So when we see someone with it, especially what we consider to be a lot of it, we tend to give them a pass. That's got to be something special about that person. However, our mind works it out. The last thing, man, that's not many of us make it up there. Leave that person alone. Man, every time somebody get up there, somebody got to come. Look, my problem is get your paper. Please get your paper. Everybody ought to be trying to get paper, not for the material things. I've been there. I can tell you compiling material things will not answer the deepest parts uh, of your yearning. It's not going to settle your spirit. It, it, it's not. The things you buy will make you happy the moment you buy them. And from every day after that will diminish in its impact to have any positive influence on your life. That's my personal experience. That's also the results that I've gotten from numerous studies. This addiction to buying things and being a consumer never produces what it's supposed to do. It just simply leads to a repetition of poor habits. And with that being said, we have to look at this and say this. And I also want to say something else. There are a bunch of people that are routing up there. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to say some things that are going to upset some people and tick some people off in this. And it's going to be kind of over the place because there's so much that I've been sitting on. And I'll have time to organize my thoughts and I'll come back and I'll lace this out in probably three or four videos over the next week. But right now, this stuff has to be said. Look, Another thing that I see that I'm, I'm going to call out because it's so much stuff caught up in this that are, there are so many microcosms within this one story that 
impact us outside of what we're seeing happen between Diddy and Cassie and Kim Porter. All right, there are a group of people out there that are actually upset for Kim, I mean, for Cassie, because she's a light-complected, melanated woman who is racially ambiguous to some extent. Now, if you know her background and who she is, you can say, okay, she's a part, she's one of us, but she's light-complected. And we have to admit and deal with colorism. We have to admit. But see, my thing is we should be just as accept if, uh, upset if she was as dark as uh, Viola Davis, uh, someone like that, that to me, um, and, 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 and I've had the, pl the pleasure of being in the company of every complexion and every sister has a beauty about her that is unique and divine and I absolutely love my sisters uh, and I know that y'all guys can give us the business and I know so that there are a lot of things that we need to address with you guys but right now this is this is something I really want to touch on is this thing because I want the same and, and, and Kim wasn't really a dark person, but she's darker than Cassie. Okay, but I want the same energy for all of the sisters out there to get in this. But this is why it's so important because this is a microcosm. Second leading cause of death among black females between the ages of 15 and 44 is intimate partner violence and intimate partner homicide. And so that's a common thing. And so that's something that we need to deal with. That's something we need to talk about. And it, it just brings it to light because now somebody famous is doing it. And it's somebody that a lot of us are really connected with. If you are over 45, let's just say 45, 46, this guy w was around when you were probably really truly into things like, you know, he came around in my uh, probably late 20s is when I really found out who he was. And, and then on through it, in the 90s and the 2000s. So I saw this guy grow a company. And you want to see that side. You want to see, hey, check this mogul thing out. You know, Master P start, sort of started that off. Well, actually, uh, if we're going to be honest, Russell Simmons and uh, Jay Prince are probably the first two you really can talk about moguls that started it. But Master P probably he blew it up the biggest at the time. And uh, but here comes Diddy. Uh, here comes, um, you know, Jay and all these other cats that are coming up and doing their own thing. So we're starting to see multi-millionaires, people making nine figures in, in the music industry. And it's something big, but we are not measuring the cost. We're not seeing the backdrop or what's behind the veil and so we see it and all we know is they great businessmen and nobody's taking away who or who, who's got what who's a good businessman who's not what i'm saying is there's a way you play this game and you and a lot of it is has nothing to do with talent it has nothing to do with business dollars it's about understand the understanding the dark side of that game who you can get information on who you can get uh you know, you know, stuff that you can hold. And, and eventually it comes back to hunt you. For a while, Diddy was untouchable. People were taking cases for Diddy. Uh, stuff was being pushed under the rugs. It would be talked about and then it would be gone. Here's a video of this guy obviously abusing this person. And the way it went on, they're passing room. So multiple people had to hear it and report it. And so it was known what was going on. And we're just not seeing this. Now, she talks about it. And the thing that's got me, too, is if you read the sworn affidavits in the lawsuit, what you see on this video don't even come close to the shit that this dude has done to this woman. So, and anybody knows me, I, I, I'm about protecting the women. Not that I'm perfect, but I'm never going to put my hands on a woman. Uh, I didn't cheat in my marriage. Uh, you know, I mean, just things that to me matter, but it goes deeper than that. And I don't want to make it seem like, you know, uh, it's just a couple of things. But the one thing you cannot do is be a person that makes a woman afraid to be in your presence. If you like, if you watch the um, video footage of him in public, whether it's on a red carpet, whether it's at the premiere of something and you're watching him, watch her body language, watch how she's behaving with him. And 
I don't want to hear because I know all the stuff I've been doing this for so long. I know all the stuff uh, for the people who are going to be apologists for this dude. Uh, you know, they do it. I don't give a damn about what they do. The reason we where we at right now is because sick motherfuckers do what they do. So don't tell me what they do. We're supposed to be operating at a higher frequency. We're supposed to be operating at a way that we can access things in our life, in our spirituality, in our mentality, in our power that gives us what we need to overcome this oppression that we're living in. So in that sense, I, I, I'm not trying to be like them. And that's one of the biggest problems we have is because he's he's he reminds you of them because he's a billionaire. And when you normally think of a billionaire, you think of a white person. So, hey, he's a billionaire black man. So, hey, leave him alone. No, the fuck, I'm not going to leave him alone. And I hope if I do something that somebody sits up and says, hey, man, what you're doing ain't good. And and and, and, and we're not talking about an accident. We're not talking about a mistake. We're not talking about. Um, I mean, a bunch of different things. Stuff happens. Again, I'm not perfect. I'm, I've made bad business decisions. I've made a bunch of different things, but I've always tried to correct them because that's what it was. It was a bad decision. It was a mistake. I misgaged. I miss it. So I'm going to do the best I can to make it right. This isn't what's happening now. This dude is leaving a trail of disaster and destruction. He took his kid's mother from him. He, he, he He's watching. And you got to understand that kids aren't stupid especially at the age these kids were when their mom died and all the things that they're seeing unfold before them now they sit up and they're looking at this and they are realizing who their you know who their who their dad is and there's got to be a sense of loyalty to him he's their dad but at the same time he's they got to be thinking what 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 what, what happened uh, and all, all of that. But anyway, that's that part. So miss me with the, you know, the whole we pulling down a black man thing, the whole thing like that, because nobody supports black men. I just did a thing with black men last night. Uh, nothing but black men allowed. We just we did a whole thing. I do it the third uh, Thursday of every month. And so I'm, I'm all about elevating black men. I want us to eat. I want us to eat heavy and hard. So it has nothing to do with that. But I want us to do it right. And the last thing is if we're going to be sinking, motherfuckers, don't let it be us. You know, I, I'm about positive vibes. I'm about building. And, and, and I'm about the no hatred. Now, but if you come for me, be prepared to come for me because I'm ready. I, 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 don't let the niceness make you think I'm soft or that I, I won't touch. I'm not candy at all. But what I'm saying is i rather just get my paper. i rather just love on my people. i rather, rather just really enjoy love. But if I got to handle something, it's not going to be the people I'm supposed to be protecting, the people I'm supposed to be loving. It's going to be the people that's trying to get at the people I'm supposed to be protecting. And that's the thing that really gets me is because we're seeing the highlights of another black man with resources and a level of um, a level of access that most of us don't have and instead of representing us and, and, and being something that we can sell our kids that's the kind of guy you want to be because that's who they're going to see the most they're sitting up and doing all the things that I consistently teach against I consistently write against I consistently lecture about and so yes I'm going to speak on it it's a horrible thing and don't get me wrong I'm about forgiveness but at some point you see a pattern the pattern is I burn people and I keep it moving I got some real dark ways and I do what I gotta do you know, I'm th I thank God that when Shine got out, he got the hell away from here. Uh, went to Belize with his pops and, you know, was working and doing some things in politics. And, um, I mean, he's that dude over there. His dad is the prime minister of Belize, so he's over there doing it. But I'm glad he got away and didn't try to reconnect with none of this stuff. He, he did what his loyalty told him to do for Diddy. He bit the bullet. He did. He gave up nine years of his life. Uh, come to find out he didn't fire the shot. But hey, it's a bunch of stuff that's going to come out um, when you start to really truly look at it. But I, I suggest those of you who want to support this dude, 
go read the affidavits that, that have been filed. And yeah, these are until proven only out accusations. But, you know, somebody accuses of you of something one time. That could be, um, that could be somebody lying. Somebody accuses you a second time. That could be somebody just sitting up and seeing that uh, your name is out there and people might believe them so they jump on the bandwagon but when receipts start rolling in consistently and it's the same type of behavior then you have to sit up and say what the hell is going on here and that's what I'm doing right now I'm saying what the hell is going on uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna dump this right now I'm gonna jump off uh, I got some things I need to do, but I had to at least touch on that. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna iron a lot of this out, uh, press it and make it make it more more lucid and congruent. But it's so much going on over so long of a period of time that it's all rushing to my head at one time, and it's like mad crazy. But we're gonna undress it. We're gonna undress it from a sociological perspective, from a psychological perspective, from a community perspective, um, and more but we have got to hold the people in our community accountable for the way they behave and, and act um, especially when it comes to others within our community and that's that's it on that so I'm gonna jump off of here and I'm gonna let you guys do what you're doing then I'll get back uh, I might drop another one sometime tomorrow on that note I'm out you guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day